Today we're going to start working with the final Festo Didactic Mech Lab Trainer, and that is the handling system. And the first thing we're going to do is take our 15 pin connector that we've been using and get it configured for this. The even row is our inputs, the odd row is our outputs. So we have four inputs, five outputs. And in our conveyor exercise, we went through this in detail, but that's going to be pins one, three, four five and seven for our inputs, two, four, six, eight, and 10 for our outputs. And we're gonna continue building on the wiring that we've been using in the previous exercises. So on our Micro 850, we already have input zero as pin one. We have input one as pin three, output four on pin two, output five on pin four, and output six on pin six. Now we're gonna add output seven as pin eight and output eight as pin 10. And then we have our 15 pin connector. I'll put a link to it in the description. And of it, we have the black going to input zero, the brown going to input one, the red going to input two, and the orange going to input three. And on the output side, we have the black with white stripe going to output four, the brown with white stripe going to output five, the red with white stripe going to output six, the yellow going to output seven, and the blue going to output eight. And the same with the previous two Mech Lab trainers, we're going to create a new blank program to test our I.O. We'll go new, and I'm going to call this my Festo handling, select controllers. I have a Micro 850, LC50E, and this is a 2080 L50E 24QBB. I'll select it, add to project, and before we do anything else, I am going to configure the IP address because remember, it's going to default to DHCP. We'll hit configure, and the default IP address of our PLC trainer is 192.168.1. 10 and the subnet of 255, 255, 255, 0 is going to work. I'm actually doing some networking videos after this, so I am going to put a gateway in of 192.168.1.1, but that isn't necessary for your application. And let's go ahead and download this program. And if you need any help downloading your program or you're like, whoa, you just blew through how to create a new program way too fast, then hit that subscribe button. We have lessons on all of that. And immediately we see we've got a couple of sensor inputs. So let's go to our controller variables. Now one, I am in the logic themes now, but I'm gonna switch back to the default theme until we get a little further into this, just so you can follow with your program. So we're gonna double click on global variables. And right there, we have input zero and input two on right now, and both of our cylinders are retracted. So I'm gonna manually move the cylinder. Now be really careful. You do not wanna grab it by the suction cup right here, but if we grab the top piece of it here, we can move the cylinder out and immediately that sensor light went off. So that is input zero, and I'm going to call that our traverse cylinder. Input zero, right now we have his pin one. I am going to put traverse retracted. And chances are that means that this is going to be our vacuum cylinder retracted. Again, don't grab it by this piece. I'm just going to grab it and push it down a little bit. The light goes off here, and then input two did go out. Raise it back up. Input two comes back on. I'm going to name input two our vacuum retracted. Now I'm going to extend my traverse cylinder all the way out, and we see its extend switch illuminate, and we have input one on now. That means input one is going to be our traverse extended. Let's not assume anything. Let's go ahead and test. The vacuum extended. Can't quite see it, but it switches on the side. It did light up. And input three comes on. So that is going to be our vacuum extended. Now let's make sure our air is off. And we're going to toggle our outputs and at least figure out which one is where. Our first solenoid is wired to output four. And I do get a click. 
on our traverse cylinder. So it's one direction of our traverse cylinder. I'll turn it off. And now I'm going to turn on output five. And I got to click on the other side of our traverse cylinder. I'll turn it off and turn on output six. That's going to be our vacuum up and down. Not sure which side. And I'll turn output six off, turn output seven on. That is the other side of our vacuum up and down. And finally, we have output eight. And that is going to be our vacuum solenoid. So it's actually going to make the suction to pick our part up. All right, now that we kind of have an idea of at least which cylinder is which, we are going to turn our air on. I'm going to put my safety glasses on. And I'm going to turn the air on and pay attention. Because notice we have sudden movement. Always be really careful when you've been testing I.O., when you've been moving things manually and you turn the pneumatics back on. Now, Festo Didactics has absolutely some of the best exercises I've seen to teach you about the pneumatic portion of this. But I still want you to get that little bit of reality check when you get out there and you turn this valve and all of a sudden half your stuff moves. But now we know that this is our traverse cylinder and we are retracted right now and i am going to turn on output four and that extends our traverse i'm going to note output four is traverse extended i'm going to note that output four is traverse extend uncheck output four and we know output five is the other side of it and that's going to retract our traverse. On input five, I'm going to put traverse retract. I'll turn off output five. And now we're going to turn on output six. Now we know that is our vacuum extend. I'll put that on output six. Then output seven is vacuum retract. I'll put that on output seven. And finally, we have output eight. And output eight is going to sound like a vacuum leak. And here's where you need to go through Festo's lesson on this. But this is actually creating a vacuum to pick that part up. So on output eight, I am going to put vacuum. All right, all our IO test out good. So in the next video, we're going to talk through programming the steps to sequence through this process and click here to follow me over there.